then once mating is done they'll produce broods which needs to be taken care of so parental care can be paternal done by the parents usually male and it is pretty prominent in fishes and few amphibians paternal care is usually prominent in case of fishes pretty prominent and amphibians and maternal care is pretty prominent in case of mammals and reptiles okay so this uh, so whenever we are talking about uh, differential parental care it is pretty prominent that paternal care is seen in the most in many multiple fishes as well as amphibians and maternal care is prominently seen in many cases of uh, mammals as well as reptiles now biparental care is pretty common in case of aves or uh, bird groups okay and there might be no parental care as well no parental care is seen many uh, reptilian groups like in case of turtles turtles do not show any kind of parental care and many snakes as well okay apart from that even from insects many insects have arachnids have specifically more maternal care arachnids if you know that spiders scorpions and mites all of them show better maternal care they are devotional mothers spiders are very devotional mother they even die saving their um, spiderlings okay even scorpions carry the uh, uh, scorpions little scorpions on their back so there are multiple kind of organisms which show differential parental care so it will be very interesting to know more about it if you go through it now there is allo parental care allo parental care is shown in multiple mating systems where there it societal systems okay if that is societally complex then that is shown to be allo parental care allo parental means here there are multiple organisms here there are multiple individuals which are trying to take care of the brood so when in so there might be mother and there is there are ants okay so in a particular situation a mother when produces a brood let's say for let's say 10 kind of kids so in the absence of mother the ants will take care of it okay so it is allo parental care so allo parental care talks about you know taking care of same species individual or con specifics in the absence of the parent so that is allo parental care and it is prominent in case of different societies and that is prominent in honey bees that is prominent in chimpanzees and primates and also in humans so parental care being an interesting topic there are multiple aspects of parental care there are multiple factors that influence parental care it could be based on which type of type mating system it was so in case of let's say it is polygyny that means there might be situational changes with respect to the polyandry if it is you know monogamy it will be more biparental where multiple parents are kind of influencing it okay then it depends on the mode of the fertilization if it is externally fertilized then uh, there are less chances of parental care okay and the parent and the parent which is carrying on the eggs have more chances to take care of it okay and sometimes even less care is shown whereas in internal fertilization usually the mother takes care of it more with concern with father then it depends on territoriality and aggression as well the characters the individuals which are more aggressive and territorial or the larger territory then they'll be influencing which kind of parental care it will be required then comes resource provisioning where it talks about you know how much of parental care can particular individual will take depends on the resource as well now so there are multiple factors or multiple resource factors which decide if a particular parent can take care of the individual as well provide, providing resources now it is subject to different territorial situation if the territory is large and the resources provisional then it will be able to take more and more care and it will provide more parental influence but if it is aggressive then there are most of the chances that female can take over or if the female is aggressive then it will chances that male will take over so you know which parent will take care and how much of that care will be it depends on these particular characters apart from that it also depends on the nest you know which kind of nest they are ties and how much of uh, you know uh, uh, and how much of area does that nest provides what is the brood size that can be done in the nest how can be provisioned all of that influences parental choices yeah apart from that there are multiple factors which influence the amount of care that parent can give okay so it depends on the brood size and the optimality it can produce so 
so a particular female and male or a group of particular parents can only provision a set of individuals so let's say a particular let's say sparrow so sparrow can provision only a breed size of let's say three to four individuals okay if the individuals are let's say six although the individual number is more but it's very difficult to you know satiate or uh, provide food for all the six individuals so it will be very difficult for the parents for the male and the female to uh, take out insects and to find insects and provide them okay so eventually they cannot be able to take care of all the six and three of them will die so the brood need to be at optimal size for the parents to provision and the amount of care depends on what is the brood optimality what is the optimal size of that brood then sexual conflict so as we are talking about sperm competition as we are talking about multiple uh, males competing for it and we are talking about social deal rankings so there are multiple uh, situations where there conflict is there so the conflict between male and female or multiple males and all the sexual conflict that is available and arising that will influence how much of amount a particular parent can give it okay if the male is facing more and more competition so it will be provisioning less okay if the female is getting more and more uh, no, uh, multiple males are trying to woo it or trying to force uh, mate them then there is also the female will be less caring about it so there are multiple situations or multiple kind of uh, scenarios where if they will be able to produce influence the amount of care and then there is group size and resources as we are talking about how much of care can a particular parent give that depends on the group size okay so let's say there are multiple uh, individuals in a group let's say in a group one there are multiple uh, babblers okay let's say there are seven babblers and the resource that is available in that particular uh, uh, group can be only available to produce two chicks per babbler so all of them produce two chicks and there are 14 so that is optimal situation for that group but if uh, one of them produced six one of them produced eight one of them produced three one of them produced one so in these situations it will go above the group resource size and hence they will not be able to take care of all of them yeah so they have to eradicate some of them will die so it depends on the group size as well okay so if it's a if a system is group living then it will depend on the group size then row allocation to parents now which role is allocated to them okay is it uh, the female taking care is it the male taking care so which role is allocated to which of the uh, uh, no uh, parent let's say female is usually allocated with the nourishing of that and breeding and incubation of the eggs males are usually uh, available to take care of the brood by providing resources or insects where the female can't go out but in few situations males are you know late to incubate and you know take care of the egg where female goes out and uh, brings food and there is a role reversal and that's how the situations depends and uh, uh, says that which particular character or which particular parent will give more care to it and that also decides that how much of care they will get okay so in the situations where a male is provisioning you know what particular eggs the care is usually up to the point okay when they will hatch out and after that the male will go off okay so parental care also goes up to the situation where they wean out and they uh, go grow out then there is different allocation of brood so many a times what happens in when there are multiple uh, broods in particular uh, egg so one so uh, so there are many situations where there are multiple eggs in a brood okay so few eggs are you know better at uh, in begging few chicks are better at begging few chicks produce you know redder beaks and redder underparts to show that they want more food and they are fed better okay so there is different allocation of food in the brood as well so it also depends that which brood which egg is getting more so they'll uh, you know produce more and more kind of nutrition benefits and hence they'll grow out but those which are not getting that much of food will die off or will produce weak individuals so it also depends that how allocation is being provisioned to that particular individuals so all of these characters are important and influence parental care and the amount of care that parent can give okay then when we talk about a particular brood when it you know uh, gets hatched or born what kind of action is that okay so what kind of birth is it going through it could be oviparous it could be viviparous it could be oviviviparous now we know about the examples oviparous usually talks about the organisms 
which are being produced from eggs okay and it is direct childbirth or direct birth and these kind of situations where a particular individual lays eggs inside the womb okay and then the uh, eggs hatch in the womb and then the individuals or the particular generations get birth out of the canal or let's say uterus okay so in this situation of viviparous the eggs are produced and they grow out and hatch inside the womb and the individuals get birth and come out as moving individuals and it also depends of different type of yolk content so usually in oviparous that is you know organisms which produce egg that could be l acetyl l acetyl is all the yolk content which is very minimal minimal egg, egg yolk content and then there is telulacetyl telulacetyl are those kind of a content which you will find in the uh, lower content with respect to that and in a particular movemental side it will be not be on the center and central acetyl as the name suggests the yolk is usually centrally placed and central acetyl it is usually medium in place the yolk is usually found around the center it could be also micro acetyl so micro acetyl says that the yolk content will be lesser and there is mega acetyl mega acetyl are the eggs which has lot of yolk content okay so it depends on which kind of yolk content is there and which kind of eggs are produced also they can be divided to understand different natal characters with respect to that then one other aspect of the birth and entire breeding ecology process is growth and development so different organisms which give birth the young ones are usually produced in form of a blastula and gastula and you know the developmental stages where a particular individual is divided from one particular egg gamete fertilized egg and then it forms a particular zygote which eventually runs out to become a particular baby that is true to different organisms which are produced in usually in mammalian systems you know but in different eggs and different systems there are multiple stages of uh, development okay so we know about metamorphosis metamorphosis is particular structural changes in organisms shape size morphological characters okay it could be progressive or regressive okay progressive usually talks about a positive movement where they are moving towards complexity okay positive metamorphosis talks about metamorphosis change of form where there it is positive positive in the sense they are moving towards complexity yeah so that is progressive which could be ametabolous metamorphosis can be ametabolous where it contains no larval stage okay hemimetabolous which have a partial larval stage which are also called as nymphs okay here you will find won't find larva but the eggs will hatch into nymphs which will be a non reproductive structures of the adults okay it will look like the adult but they will lack any kind of reproductive structure so that is pretty prominent in crickets in case of cockroaches so you will find those kind of organisms as in nymphal stage okay so they appear like adults but they don't have any reproductive structures so the only difference between adult and the nymph is lack of reproductive structures okay then there is holometabolous now this is very prominent and you know it well x for larva and larva produces adults which usually goes through pupation okay so these kind of metamorphosis happens and then there is retrogressive now it is seen in tunicates okay um and also in echinoderms so you see that you know larval stages are usually motile but the adult stages are sessile okay so there are many kind of different uh, animals which shows retrogressive many kind of organisms which show retrogressive metamorphosis so usually this is the development so metamorphosis is the developmental stage of many organisms and it shows about which movement will be is it positive or is it negative negative is retrogressive where it is moving towards less complexity okay so you know understand larval stage was moving so it was more complex they had movement structures but but it became sessile so it became less complex hence retrogressive and progressive can be of multiple types ametabolous where there is no larval stage 
there could be hemimetabolus where there is a nymphal stage associated with this nymphs appear that of the same of the adult but lack any kind of reproductive structure whereas holometabolus talks about eggs and larval stage a prominent larval stage which undergoes pupation to form adult okay so that is the entire lecture thank you